This is the first and only time I'll do a headstock of this style. Uh, that style being the double taper, plain bearing style of spindle so common to watchmakers lays. It just was so much work. Uh, they're actually a brilliant design that lasts just about forever if they're properly oiled. I've got watchmakers lays that are well over 100 years old and so show no signs of wear. The challenge becomes in how do you machine this? How do you turn two taper sections so that they're an exact the, the exact correct position relative to each other axially? and then turn a mating part exactly the same way such that the two mate with uh, an oil film's amount of clearance, maybe a tenth. I suspect that lathe manufacturers deployed some sort of grinding and lapping fixture to accomplish this and uh, I never did find the silver bullet or magic uh, elegant solution that accomplishes this to perfection. So while I may have taken the long way home, I did get it to work and will describe in this series how I went about it. Here's the, uh, the inboard bearing pressed out of the headstock. It's a hardened steel bearing that runs on a hardened steel shaft, similar arrangement to a watchmaker's lathe. And you can see from the scoring inside, this lathe was run without oil, and you could literally, with your hands, wiggle the uh, spindle shaft back and forth, and it would rattle on the bearing. So the whole thing is just completely uh, destroyed, and every surface needed to be re uh, addressed and redone. First thing I'm going to do is re-grind the spindle shaft. There's three surfaces to grind. One is the outboard straight section uh, of the shaft that runs in a plane bearing. And then the uh, inboard side has the double taper. I made up this little carrier rig that would catch on a dog uh, that was clamped to the front end of the spindle. Work starts by grinding a stub of metal in the rotating head of the tool and cutter grinder the inside taper of the uh, spindle nose. The spindle nose taper gets ground afterwards so uh, it'll all be super precise but you know the more concentric you can get it from the beginning the better. As I'll be grinding tapers I also wanted to make sure that the spindle, the grinding wheel spindle height was at exactly the same height as the work. Measure the spindle, measure the tailstock, uh, center, machine a block to make up the difference and then just put a level across was uh, how I did it as shown in the photograph. If you're just tuning in, it's not really a cylindrical grinder. It's a tool and cutter grinder with a workhead, rotating workhead. So it makes for a, a light duty cylindrical grinder. Not as good as a full fledged cylind cylindrical grinder, but infinitely better than no cylindrical grinder. I know it's not a common tool for the home shop, but uh, I bought this thing for next to nothing and reconditioned it. That is scraping it from the ground up and got it really into a high state of accuracy. One of the great things about a grinder like this is that the top table pivots so you can uh, dial it in to get parallelism to within a tenth. It's done by a couple of screws at the end that I showed in an earlier video, but it takes a bit of a grinding allowance. I didn't have that here. I wanted to have minimal material removal on the shaft, so I dialed it in as best I could with a tenths indicator and then just reserved the tweaking of the screws for a final adjustment. This photo shows the spindle shaft before grinding. It's got a lot of scoring in it. In short order, with fortunately minimal material removal, we've got a great finish and a parallel surface that's a consistent diameter within a tenth. I used a thin, fine wheel, if I recall, 150 grit wheel. Also, when cylindrical grinding, I usually tilt the head over one or two degrees after uh, after dressing so that the, the only the edge of the wheel is cutting. This just makes for a lot less rubbing and uh, I find improved results, especially if you want a consistent diameter up to a shoulder. With the outboard end ground, the next thing to do is to slew the top table over and set it up to grind at the taper of the uh, three degree taper on the inboard side of the headstock spindle. Uh, I'm using a tense indicator here to get it as close to dead on as possible. By the way, when I refer to a tenth, I'm referring to one ten thousandths of an inch or a couple of microns. Uh, I'm in Canada, which is officially metric. However, most machining and fabrication, or a, at least a heck of a lot of it, is still done in Imperial. With the table dialed in properly with the sign bar, it's a fairly straightforward job to grind this uh, taper section. The last surface, the 45 degree taper, is uh, the most tricky in that the top table doesn't pivot over that much so instead of being able to kind of angle the top table 
and use the table left to right motion to grind, I have to dress the wheel at 45 and just come in and kiss the work. To dress the wheel, first of all, I have to make sure that the dressing uh, tool is at the center height, uh, meaning in this case that the motion of the angular dressing tool is going to be in a vertical plane going through the uh, spindle axis. And I just did this, set this up by eye as shown in the photograph. A diamond point is mounted and when I'm ready to dress, I put the whole dressing, uh, angular dressing attachment inside a plastic bag just to keep all the grit out of the motion. And we've got a nicely dressed wheel ready for grinding. I can't traverse the work with the wheel, so I'm just going to kiss it and then I'll mount the work in the lathe and polish it with a hard Arkansas stone. The hard Arkansas stone takes about nothing off, but it'll just knock off some of the high points if there are any. Uh, you do what you have to do, but it always struck me as slightly suboptimal grinding like this where you're not able to traverse the work across the uh, or the wheel across the work because it's that traversing that gives you the high sampling rate between grit and work that creates the, uh, the, the finish and the spark out. Won't matter here I don't think in the hard Arkansas will get things polished up nicely just mentioning it as part of the process when you are not able to traverse the work with the wheel. The results are, I think, pretty good. Everything is perfectly concentric, as it was all ground at the same setting. And that's probably a good spot to call it a wrap. On the next installment, we're going to deal with the outboard bearing. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll get to work on the next part.